Boom. All right, what's up, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about the little tumble that the cryptocurrency space has been taking over the past couple of days. The markets overall have been seeing increased levels of volatility in the wake of earnings season, with hyper growth sectors of the market taking the blunt of it. Crypto, of course, does fall under this hyper growth category. So the price action that we've been seeing isn't all that surprising. But I do want to preface the video by saying that I'm chilling. I'm still bullish. It doesn't make any sense to me for Bitcoin to have barely scratched new all time highs just a week ago, only to be followed by a reversal of trend and to the beginning of elongated downside. So still bullish on Bitcoin. Of course, if I'm still bullish on Bitcoin, I am still bullish on all of the names that we're going to go on to talk about today. And I have been taking advantage. You got to be a shark in these bloody waters and uh, i'm excited to see uh not only the bounce but the short-term rally that a lot of these guys could see from here all right so keeping it short and sweet today you guys we are going to be sticking strictly to the charts covering the following names today in this order going down the watch list kicking it off of course with bitcoin we're talking bitcoin miners we're talking bitcoin stocks we gotta kick it off with the king so we will kick it off with the big man himself then move on to coinbase coinbase at this point in time, in my opinion, is the safest play within the sector. A lot of people, uh, although I should say, although Coinbase has been moving with the markets, uh, also Robinhood announced earnings today. They kind of tanked the stock tank like 10%. That probably bled over into Coinbase a bit. But uh, Coinbase right now, Coinbase profits from a fundamental perspective off buys and sells. It doesn't matter if the cryptocurrency space is going down. If, if Coinbase is seeing high levels of trade volume, they are profiting. And uh, keep in mind, you guys, all of these guys do announce earnings in early November for the most part. And uh, I do think that that will be a very pivotal time. If we see more sideways to come, even more downside to come, I think early November will definitely see a change in pace and a reversal to the upside because I think all of the names that we're talking about today when it comes to their earnings reports will kind of blow them out of the water, all right? So we'll uh, kick it off with Coinbase again. In my personal opinion, uh, the kind of the safest play in the sector. Again, it's always possible we see more downside, but when it comes to asymmetric risk profile, upside potential outweighs downside risk. Uh, I think Coinbase is just a very appealing trade at the moment. Again, trillion dollar company one day in my opinion. So kick it off with Coinbase. Sorry for that tangent right off the bat, but after Coinbase, we will move on to the good old Bitcoin miners. The three we are going to be covering today are Riot Blockchain. Marathon Digital, and then we'll close it out with Bit Farms. All three, of course, seeing uh, seeing some pretty staggering downside today in the wake of Bitcoin, seeing that little sell-off, and again, just general market volatility. So, uh, before we dive into the charts, I do want to read through the intro to the newsletter I sent out this morning because it gives kind of my general thoughts on the macro environment. And again, today was a pretty pretty choppy day in the markets, not only for crypto, but once again for growth sectors, for EVs, for some of the SPACs that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, but again. I am. I, I, I did take advantage today. You guys know I'm super. I'm hyper bullish on on BRPM, kind of the Phase Clan merger thing. So today took advantage, and uh, that's again, that's what you got to do. You got to do your best to stay rational in choppy waters. And thankfully, the waves, fam, we thrive in volatility. And I'm excited for the holiday season to come. Uh, uh, that is coming. That is ahead of us, and uh, it is on the horizon. So once again, exciting times in the near future. It's Hump Day. Wednesday at the time of recording, October 27th. It's hump day, and the markets are definitely getting humped today. As I write this, I can feel the fear in the air as I watch everything continue to fall in trading view, uh, in the tab, in the trading view tab beside this one. So I write in the mornings, and then like in a tab right here is trading view where I just have constantly like Bitcoin or just an active ticker showing me what the market's doing just so I can kind of keep a pulse on it while I'm writing. And uh, as I was writing all of this, I could just see dun 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 dun. So anyway. No worries, team. You got to stand strong. Cryptocurrency saw quite the drop off last night, which is, of course, bleeding into the crypto related into crypto related equities. Risk on assets across the board are taking a bit of a beating today as capital is flowing into more lar uh, stable large caps like Apple, Amazon and Tesla. So, again, small cap, kind of small caps. The Russell 2000 speaking a little quick. Sorry, you guys kind of want to bang this one out for you. But small caps took a beating. Again, 
A lot of a lot of people are getting margin calls, a lot of capital flowing into bigger, safer names like Apple, Amazon, and Tesla, the blue chips, the blueies. Um, the strength we kicked off the week with made me believe that we'd see continued strength over the following days, but evidently that hasn't been the case. Sentiment is a tough read at the moment, and the markets feel stranger than usual. I guess it is earnings season, so curveballs are to be a bit more expected than usual. Regardless, I remain bullish on these risky buggers, and I think that once November rolls around, we'll start to see these names shine. I made quite a few moves today, but the primary rationale behind these trades was to balance out the portfolio in the way that I feel most fit for the moment. So again, you guys, I remain bullish, but it's still important during times like this. The market's moving quick, especially as we approach once again the holiday season where, where you see uh, elevated levels of volume. Everything's just kind of more, uh, more sporadic as opposed to summer where everything was just kind of slow for a while. So we're getting into exciting times, you guys. And again, I'm, I'm doing my best to prepare the portfolio for uh, those are exciting times ahead, uh, diversifying. And again, there's a few plays that I'm pretty damn bullish on in, in a few different sectors, not only crypto. So if you want to know exactly what I'm trading, how I'm trading it, exactly how my personal portfolio is composed, uh, that is going to be the first link down below. 15 bones a month or 40 bucks for every three months, completely up to you if you choose to sign up. But exactly as it states, complete breakdown. It's my entire personal portfolio, all my calls, puts, stock positions, cryptocurrency positions that I do update every single trading day during market hours. And along with every update, I also send out the complimentary email newsletter explaining my thoughts. So this is the intro. Intro. After the intro, I do go on to explain my trades down below, like right below where we were, right below this little link right here. That's the actual portfolio. And then below, I explain the trades. And then in part two that I send out about half an hour to an hour later, uh, I do throw in some charts of whatever I feel is important to share with you guys, some price targets, and uh, just kind of some solo analysis of different uh, analyses of different plays that I'm excited about on that given day. So once again, first link down below means a lot of you guys check it out. If not, uh, I appreciate you watching right now. And of course, before we dive into the charts, if you're still bullish on Bitcoin, if you are still bullish on all the names we're talking about, if you were shark in these bloody waters, if you took advantage of some of these pullbacks over the past couple of days, give the video a like. And of course, if for some reason you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel to join the journey. All right. Bitcoin, again, you guys, just the fact that we broke uh, to a new all-time high on October 20th, a week ago uh, from today, uh, broke to a new all-time high, broke the $65,000 level, went up to $67,000. And uh, again, once once an asset, not only Bitcoin, but pretty much any asset breaks to a new all-time high, it's very rare you just shoot up a couple percent from the previous all-time high and then go on to once again kind of initiate that long-term reversal of trend and a longer-term downtrend uh, towards towards capit uh, eventual capitulation. So from a short-term perspective, you guys see these little things right here. This is kind of that wonky head and shoulders that I mentioned in yesterday's video, if you guys caught that. So I did say Bitcoin right now is, is obviously in a short-term downtrend from the high it set a week ago. Downtrend, very uh, uh, textbook short-term downtrend. But this does also look like a janky head and shoulders, and it's kind of resolving itself as such. So head and shoulders pattern uh, kicking off right here. Left shoulder, base of the left shoulder, boom. Uh, neck, head, down, neck again. You can kind of see this right shoulder forming. And uh, we kind of we, we played out in a way that does look like a, a pretty again janky head and shoulders pattern but still a head and shoulders pattern even if something's janky you guys the purpose of technical patterns is just kind of psychology so it's psychology printed on a chart it's kind of prime movements uh even if there is some chop in there even if there is some minutia within the the overall movement if it resembles if kind of like the silhouette of the pattern resembles the pattern itself then a lot of times it'll play out as such and again given the current macro environment the dollar is it is just you could make the bullish or bearish argument for the dollar right now so it's kind of in in kind of no man's land which does make everything a little bit of a tougher read but again considering risk on hyper growth assets uh do excel uh historically excel tend to excel i should say historically tend to excel during uh the holiday season during the months of november december january february uh bitcoin is just such an appealing asset coinbase super appealing and all the names we're talking about are very appealing assets so let's hope we can see uh somewhat of repeat not history repeat itself but let's hope we can see history rhyme to some extent from just a year ago and uh, kind of kick off this bull market as we approach the holiday season so bitcoin uh sh super short term by the time you guys are watching this maybe we'll see this i do think bitcoin is going to bounce up now that this head and shoulders pattern has been resolved keep in mind you guys always possible that we come down more if we come down more uh maybe we come down here to test this high kind of this first parabolic high right here around 55 but in all honesty you guys with just the fundamentals surrounding bitcoin right now etfs coming uh banks looking to pick up some bitcoin uh, as we move into the year of 2022 
it just doesn't make sense to me that we fall below 55. Uh, but in my opinion, I think 58 to resolve the short-term head and shoulders. More medium-term head and shoulders, I guess, is the most likely. Very short-term. I do want to see this downtrend obviously broken. So if by, I mean, by the end of the month, pretty much to break the downtrend, I'll just say October 20. I mean, the end of the day, the beginning of October 29th. So end of the day tomorrow, uh, again, when most of you guys, I assume, are going to be watching this, if we can see Bitcoin close above 61.5, um, ideally as of right now, just to keep it conservative, if we can see Bitcoin uh, hit 62K, just strike 62K at all, uh, close a four hour ideally, close a four hour above $62,000, I will flip short term bullish and I think new all time highs are ahead and I think we are ultimately on our way. Um, if all goes accordingly to retest previous support, uh, on this ascending channel is new resistance November 1st if we see a rally over the next four days that would take us to about seventy three thousand dollars okay so is this guaranteed to happen not at all but uh, would I be surprised if this happens not at all that's Bitcoin let's move on to coinbase so coinbase Again, just looking solid right now, Coinbase has seen quite the rally since it's low uh, at the beginning of this month, around $225. Now sitting just above $310, reclaim this kind of middle tier ascending channel. I do think now Coinbase textbook series of higher highs and higher lows. This line of support is a very significant line of support, which it is nearing still setting this higher low in. It only makes sense to me that in the short term, Coinbase does come up to test this line of resistance right here. So November 1st, if a Coinbase does come up even by the end of this week. So we have a couple days left, but uh, getting into the beginning of next week, uh, if Coinbase is able to see another run up, which I don't think is out of the possibility at all, that would take us up 12% to test the test the line of resistance on this middle tier ascending channel. But uh, in all honesty, you guys, especially by the time coin well, i guess put that back there especially by the time coinbase announces earnings i would not be surprised to see it jump up to test the the previous all-time high that it set on its ipo back in april uh, around 430 dollars which from current levels would represent a 37 or 38 percent price appreciation okay coinbase Let's move on to right. Also with Coinbase, the, the the volume that we're seeing there is looking freaking fantastic. So volume is good. Keeps the waves rolling in. Uh, Riot looking freaking terrible right now, if I'm being honest, which sucks. The volume here is looking good as well. But uh, Riot is in a very, very obvious downtrend. You can even you can even extend this to up here. So Riot is in this downtrend, this very, very evident downtrend. It is reaching the low that it saw kind of in the middle of this month, completely wiping out the gains that we saw over the past couple of weeks. Um, and again, you guys, the longer that Riot falls, or the more that Riot falls from this point, Bitcoin reaching all-time highs, Riot, I think, announces earnings on, on the 9th or 11th. Uh, can, can I see that right? Uh, where is it? So November 16th, I guess. So the middle of November, but the, I mean, the earnings forecast for a lot of these miners is very is very impressive, is very high. Um, so once once the earnings come out, I think it's inevitable that the players like Riot just go moon. So from a technical perspective, though, earnings fundamental mid-November, in my eyes, it's pretty much inevitable. Uh, up until then, I will be just loading the portfolio with Riot when I deem necessary. But um, again, mid-November, I think it's almost guaranteed that uh, the fundamentals will catch up with the stock price and the valuation. Uh, Riot currently sitting at a valuation of, it's right above that, 2.55 bill. Seems cheap, seems light for a player for what the OG of the Bitcoin mining space. Um, but short term, again, we are in this downtrend. Uh, Riot, because it's such a stark short term downtrend, it won't take much. It'll take a single green day. Four hour stokes are about to curl up. Uh, same as for Bitcoin itself, four hour stokes are about to curl up. Forgot to mention that. But four hour stokes about to curl up as soon as we see a green day. That's always good when it comes to short to medium term time horizon. And uh, I do think from here, it, we will at the very least come up to test the line of resistance on this downtrend representing almost a 22 percent price appreciation from where we're at now at about 26.50 to on november 2nd if we hit it uh about 30 32.50 if we break at this point uh, I will say at this point, if we break above 33, 34 bucks, then this this uh, line of longer term resistance will have been broken. Big old red line right here, and it's off to the freaking races. Okay, so that's right. Move on to Mara. Oh, I like the pace of this one, you guys. We're going quick. Uh, Those new tropics are really kicking today, huh? Um, so Mara is just looking freaking strong. Mara, Mara is mooning. Miss Mara, the queen has is. The king has been a simp for the queen, right? Being the king and Mar being the queen. Let me know in the comments below if you guys remember that reference from a while back. It's been a while since we referenced that. But uh, regardless, again, king been simping for the queen. And the longer that Mara outperforms Riot, the more bullish, the more increasingly bullish I become on Riot. Mara currently sitting. I mean, Riot, based on share price, is half of Mara, which is crazy. So Mara is currently sitting at a market cap of $5 billion, 2x the size. So the share price and the market cap are pretty much 2xing Riot. 
I've been saying this, you guys, like Mara, they have a little more Bitcoin on the balance sheet. They have, I mean, they pretty much have, these two companies pretty much have the same hash rate. Ride is arguably scaling in a more favorable direction when it comes to uh, kind of eco-friendly and, and, and forward-looking practices. So the valuation here, Mara, again, so much of the crypto market, and this will apply forever in crypto, is based around speculation and hype and momentum uh, because there are so many traders and so many competent individuals involved in the space that understand charting and whatnot. So it makes sense that Mara has been outperforming, but from a fundamental perspective, we know these two play catch up. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, are, are thinking this is whack that I'm saying this, but I'm, I mean, if it doesn't happen, I'll, if it doesn't happen by the end of this year, I'll gladly admit, I admit my wrong, but I do think by the end of 2021, uh, we will see these two at some point in time reach the same share price. So when that is, I don't know, but I do think that the further we move forward, right, is uh, is exuding, is displaying, there's, there's a right uh, adjective, is displaying more volatility. So it is seeing more upside, but it's also seeing more downside. And once things really start catching fire, if Bitcoin does start ripping again, uh, I do think Riot will be a far more favorable play uh, than Mara. And I do think a lot of the capital that has seen a lot of appreciation in Mara will start to bleed into other players within the sector that show more promise like Riot and uh, Bitfarm. So Mara, uh, from a technical perspective, still in this ascending channel. If we see downside, it wouldn't surprise me to retest this previous high right here or test the bottom side of this ascending channel. So not much downside potential, but Mara is also uh, re pretty much nearing its all-time highs around 57 bucks. Almost reached it just uh, just last week, just a week ago when Bitcoin broke its all-time high. Riot's all-time high is $80. So Riot can still 3x and it'll still be below its all-time high, which again, just feeds into my narrative that... Uh, Riot will probably outperform Mara. Again, just my opinion. Roast me in the comments if you disagree. Bit Farms, close it out here. Bit Farms, again, looking weird on the chart. Unfortunately, did fall back below its previous line of resistance on the long term downtrend. But at the same time, still in a series of higher highs and higher lows. Also broke this uh, pretty, pretty ascending channel, which is a bummer. Uh, but as long as Bit Farms is above $4.75, we are still te uh, technically setting in a higher low on the reversal. So, uh, base, high low higher highs again as long as we're above this level right here where bit farm set its previous low we are setting in that higher low considering bitcoin is bouncing uh i just and the whole sector just sold off today it would surprise me if we didn't see uh a reversal here in a short-term bounce again maybe maybe bleeding into a short-term rally in the case excuse me Sorry, talking a lot, breathing in a lot of air. In the case that we happen to see BitFarms reverse right here, which again, maybe you go sideways a little bit, but I still think we'll reverse. Uh, also kind of just coming around this area, somewhat bull flaggy again. God, that's a stretch, but it's all psychology at this point, you guys. Uh, if we see Bitcoin reverse, if we see Bit, uh, Bitcoin start to go up, it only makes sense that BitFarms will as well. Uh, this area will definitely come back into play, this previous support on the ascending channels, new resistance. But if BitFarms can break uh, by the beginning of the month, if by the beginning of November of the month of November, if BitFarms can break $6, I think we are definitely going to be on our way to 7 uh, by the first week or two within the um, going into the month of November. All right. So that's that, you guys. Let me know what your favorite play in the crypto space is down below. Uh, again, right now, Coinbase is the safest. I like Riot, Mar uh, Riot and BitFarms more than Mara. And uh, that's just pretty much summing up right there. Again, if you guys want to know exactly what calls I have for these bad boys, what other calls I have in my portfolio, what I've been down, double downing on. Because you guys know I've been bullish on that phase, on the phase clan uh, merger. Super pumped on that one. Seriously think that has 10x potential. But if you guys want to know exactly how I'm structuring my portfolio, exactly how I'm trading on a day-to-day -day basis, along with daily updates of Bitcoin and some of these Bitcoin miners, and again, other plays in the market that I'm excited about going in to the holiday rush. Uh, again, that is going to be the first link down below. And uh, once again, I do my best to make that worth yo guys hard earned money. So uh, it means a lot if you guys check that out. And uh, yeah, if not, no worries. I appreciate you watching now. Once again, please give the video a like if you're still watching. If you are, drop a hundred emoji down below and I'll give it a heart. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you. So I'll catch you guys downstairs in the comments. Uh, as always, until next time, you guys remember, take action, make waves. Peace.